We continue our Earth Week discussion. We were just talking about uh, off-road electric vehicles. Now we're going to talk about electric vehicles that fly. We've had this guest before, and we're going to get an update on something very cool. Brett Adcock is Archer Aviation co-founder and co-CEO, along with Akiko Fujita, to discuss the latest steps as your company. I think last time you were here was the deal with United to develop electric jet aircraft. But You've launched or at least announced that the Urban Air Mobility Network will first be tested in Miami come 2024. I know the traffic on Dixie Highway is terrible in Dade County. Why'd you pick Miami? Was it because of the traffic? I mean, traffic's one part. I mean, Miami is just an a incredible location for us as we think through. Um, one is just like a, a lot of passengers moving around the city per, per day. There's over 35 million trips per day in Miami. Uh, Miami is set up as somewhat of a polycentric city, uh, where it's really hard to get around certain city centers. Uh, there's a lot of existing infrastructure in LA, so there's um, over 50 helipads, a lot of underutilized airports. Uh, there's a lot of land uh, in in or sorry land in Miami to ultimately retrofit for uh, takeoff and landing locations. And we have a city uh, that is really pro bringing in new sustainability solutions uh, to help with you know long-term sustainable transport and also helping to fix traffic. So you mentioned LA too. Certainly, uh, I will attest to the traffic here. It has been really bad. So a lot of people looking forward to that. But when you look at where the technology stands right now, um, what's the biggest challenge to get you to 2024? Is it the density of the batteries? Is it the inability to scale in a big way? Um, where, where do you uh, sort of look at the, the biggest hurdles? Yeah, one, one thing that's kind of missed here is that all the key underlying technologies to make uh, our aircraft function in day-to-day -day operations are fully matured. Uh, we're not waiting on better electric motors or batteries or different software. Uh, everything kind of is here today. The process from now until getting to market uh, means certifying our aircraft to be as safe as commercial airlines today, which means going through a very rigorous process with the FAA here in the United States to, to certify to really high safety standards. So over the next several years, we're working in tandem now with the FAA on achieving our type certificate of our aircraft and ultimately bring them into operations in 2024. Brett, how big do you think this market could potentially be? I mean, like two different ways of looking at it. One is there's uh, tens of thousands of helicopters worldwide. Uh, you're looking at, you know, maybe over 50,000 helicopters. Uh, helicopters are, in a lot of ways, um, you know, some, somewhat of a bad product for urban air mobility. They're very expensive uh, to operate. They're not super safe. Then they're very noisy across communities. So a lot of areas like, say, the San Francisco Bay Area has banned helicopters. So we see this massive upgrade cycle over the next 10 years as uh, we shift from, say, traditional helicopters to electric aircrafts like this. And the second is, as you think about the sheer traffic inside of cities, uh, even beyond, uh, there's a need to kind of move into the, the air, move into the Z-axis uh, to help kind of alleviate that traffic and help people get around uh, in and around cities. And obviously, from a sustainability perspective, uh, it's super important uh, to move to a fully sustainable form of transportation. Uh, we view this as a multi-trillion dollar market over the next 20 years in a market that will exist in every major city around the world. Uh, you recently faced a, a lawsuit from one of your competitors, Whisk Aero, and I imagine you can't speak to that specifically, but, but I mention it only because a lot of people looked at that and said, that seems like the really early days of the EV2. It points to the competition that's in the uh, space. Uh, they're not the only competitor. You've got another one in Joby Aviation. How many players do you think can ultimately survive in this space when you consider the competition that's already there? Yeah, I mean, I think we're looking at a really huge market like worldwide over the next couple of decades. So I think there's certainly a case to be made for multiple players uh, to be there and competing over time. Uh, at Archer here, we feel very good about our stance. We have a very capitalized balance sheet uh, as we think about manufacturing and vehicle engineering. Uh, we have some of the best partners in the world with uh, Stellantis on the kind of the OEM manufacturing side. And, uh, and United, uh, earlier this quarter, we announced United would be buying a billion dollars worth of aircraft. They're also an investor and a strategic partner helping us get to market. So, and you know, on top of all of this, we think we have one of the better teams uh, positioned here uh, to really solve problems around commercialization and manufacturing and other areas that are really important for us to solve. Um, so we feel very good about our stance for Archer to get into this period of, uh, I call it escape velocity, uh, where we have the balance sheet, and the key partners in the right uh, technology here in-house uh, to ultimately um, be one of the market leaders worldwide. 
Brett, my brother, my older brother is a pilot. His son, my nephew, is a pilot. So I'm asking this question on behalf of them. And I realize targets. How much would the private citizen be able to buy one? And what's the range? Because I know they would find this incredibly interesting. I was going to say cool, but they're going to kick the tires. Yeah. In, in order to bring down costs uh, to the mass market, we are launching an aero ride network uh, where folks will be able to book this, say, through our app and take this from point to point. Uh, that way we can basically bring down costs over time. And it's also really important from a safety perspective. These aircrafts need to be uh, managed from uh, you know, maintenance and pilots and various other things correctly in order to be, you know, to hold a such high safety standards. Uh, so we think it's important from both a safety perspective and a cost perspective to be operating these aircrafts and not selling into the general public. Uh, we also have announced a, obviously a partnership with United. We'll be selling directly to United. Um, but, you know, we think there's a big area here of us working together with United and bringing a safe and affordable transportation solution to market. You had the president yesterday uh, talk about a new target to cut greenhouse gas emissions, a 50 percent cut on 2005 levels by the end of this decade. Transportation is certainly a big chunk uh, of the emissions right now. Um, how big of a dent can something like Archer or in, in electric planes more largely, um, how big of a dent can you make? Yeah, when, when you think about what we're doing here at Archer, we're really trying to solve urban air mobility. And that's, you know, generally targeting routes between 20 and 60 miles, where it's just taking too long on the ground today. So that could be, say, in a car where somebody might be driving, you know, an hour, hour and a half that we could fly in 20 minutes. So largely we're taking um, folks off the ground and probably carbon emission vehicles into the air in a fully sustainable manner. And we view that over time, the impact we can have on carbon emissions can be significant, and it's going to play an important role in moving to a fully sustainable transportation solution in the future. Akiko, thank you. Brett Adcock, Archer Aviation co-founder and co-CEO, thank you. We wish everybody at Archer continued success.